called a third way customers get in touch is through field dispatches, which is like a, a um, on-premise face-to-face contact with the customer. And what we decided to do was to map a, a complete geographical footprint of the field technician dispatch activity. And I personally, as a dashboard developer, I am deeply fond of geospatial mapping. And so it was it was a super fun project for me. So we started with establishing a baseline of customers. Okay, we want to analyze about 7 million customers. And then we looked at the number of tickets, the ticket rate, the number of dispatches they've generated, the dispatch rate. We broke all that down. Of course, we looked at the cost impact and we broke all that down to different states. And once we know, okay, a particular state shows high dispatch rate in, a, in, in this heat map kind of a chart, then I could click on Virginia and look at the different trouble types that are causing these dispatches. So if I click on Virginia, for example, I see the trouble type T1 having the highest ticket volume, uh, but T2 and T7 having high the highest dispatch rate. So I could then further click on T7, and now the heat map would zoom in to show me the zip codes in Virginia for the trouble type T7 where the dispatches are high. So now I can hover over certain zip codes, which gives me further con- contextual information. And uh, I can click on that, and then the bottom graphs would filter based on, uh, like, it'll give me further uh, um, um infrastructure-related metrics and further network-related breakdown as well. So this comes in really handy when there are weather-related events or snowstorms, hurricanes, et cetera, to see where the outages have happened and where the dispatch rates are high compared to average. And we don't even stop at the um, zip code level. We go further down to the actual customer households. So here you're seeing a correlation matrix of uh, about 500,000 zip codes. And uh, the the one that, the, the quadrant that's highlighted is the one where dispatch rates are high and the ticket rates are high. So that's your top right quadrant here. And so I could click on uh, individual zip codes and the satellite map would zoom in to show me the actual households of customers. Now I can further plug in the thresholds. Okay, show me households that have dispatched more than five times or a street that's dispatched more than five times in the last month. And so now I can identify the actual households. I can click on that household and using the Google Street View um, uh, API integration in Tableau, we are now able to see the actual infrastructure on the ground. Uh, you're able to see the street. You, you, you're getting more situational awareness now to tackle the problem. And this comes in handy when uh, in our customer narrative and tech narrative, we see, um, uh, you know, uh, we're bad in say, mentioning that the wires were hanging low at this intersection or in our backyard and so on and so forth. So you can, when there, before the technician visiting customers after all, you have much more situational awareness about how to tackle the problem. So folks in the Dispatch Research Center, DRC, use dashboards uh, to better serve customers. And uh, the last piece in the dashboard showcase, or the second last, I should say, would be uh, something which I have introduced in my team called Concept Dashboards. So there's this thing called Viz Labs in my team, and we build concept dashboards. And the whole idea is uh, similar to concept vehicles. So concept cars, are they real? Yes. Are they in mass production? No. So are dashboards, are they real? Yes. Are they alive and living and um, in production right now? No. But it's it's a way to inspire innovation. It's a way to push the boundaries forward of how you can uh, implement visual analytics and drive change in the business. So I wanted to showcase uh, my concept dashboard for this year, and I've named it uh, Project Omicron. And uh, uh, what I thought was, when we talk about spatial mapping, we usually think of outdoor geospatial mapping. But some of those same techniques, if brought indoors, can help us get tremendous, you know, location-based analytics, situational awareness to, to um, you know, solve optimization problems, if you will. And so this is the call center floor plan of an actual call center in Tennessee in Verizon. And some of the same techniques that we've used to uh, map zip codes, heat maps, satellite maps, street views uh, are, imp- are implemented to get to a dashboard that looks like this, where 
in near real time, we are analyzing the demand and supply of customer service. So calls coming in from customers, that's a demand for customer service from customers. Calls being answered, that's a supply of customer service from our reps. And not only that, but where all of that demand and supply is like where the equilibrium is being established, right? So where are these calls being answered? And so each workstation is a shape ID. Each point in the workstation is a point ID and there's a line path that's established. I'm not gonna get too much into the details, but each workstation is now a pod that can get highlighted when it crosses a particular threshold of, quite frankly, we could incorporate any metric. So for example, handle time, right? Or a hold time. If a workstation crosses the, um, you know, um, the average of hold time, uh, the supervisor on the floor gets notified uh, or would have much more information to kind of intervene uh, while the problem is uh, taking place to, uh, you know, solve for it. So, and uh, that's just an example, but um, in general, you could have sales related metrics. You could have any other metric that you can think of, any other operational metric that you could think of um, that would um, help you analyze um, your entire um, uh, day's call volume from how, um, what are the peak times, where are calls being answered, which are some of the workstations that need improvement, um, and so on and so forth. So the idea was anyone from anywhere um, can analyze the floor plan of any call center um, anytime. It's like a data-driven ring or a canary uh, for the enterprise world, if you will.